Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the second listening practice of chapter 6. This part talks about the history of money and how we used money to exchange goods. What are the items that we used to exchange goods between us? So you are required to listen to a lecture about the history of money. As you listen, check the four main topics that are discussed. Today we're going to talk about the history of money and banking. First of all, does anyone know how people shopped for things they needed before money was invented? They traded things they had for the things they needed? Right. One of the oldest types of trading between people was barter. I give you this animal skin, you give me that necklace. That's a straight exchange. But that system isn't always very convenient. Why do you think? Um, you have to have something that the other guy wants, and he has to have something that you want, and that doesn't always happen. Exactly. Let's say you have lots of umbrellas, and you want to exchange your umbrellas for food. Well, if it's not raining, no one is going to want your umbrellas, so you won't be able to eat because no one wants what you have to trade. On the other hand, if you have umbrellas to sell, and it's a rainy day, Everyone will want your umbrellas. You'll exchange all your umbrellas for food, but then you'll probably have too much food. See what I mean? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. So, what you need in that situation is a common currency. A common currency is something that is valuable for everybody, no matter what the season is, and preferably something that will last, that won't spoil. That way, you can sell your umbrellas in the rainy season, get currency, and spend that currency later when you need it. Okay, now, what kind of things did people use as currency before they had money? Any ideas? Uh, beads? Shells? Jewelry? Yes, exactly. Decorative objects, shells, beads, teeth, and feathers, they were all common currencies. Just about anything can be a common currency as long as everyone in the community agrees that it has value. The Chinese used metal tools like spades and knives. The Greeks used grain. They used grain in England, too. How can you tell? How can you tell that the English used to use grain as money? What is their money called? Oh, the pound. Exactly. The English pound used to refer to a pound of grain. What about coins? When did people start to use coins? The first coins appeared in about 600 BC in Lydia. That's about where Turkey is today. You also had coins appearing in China at about the same time. Is that when banks started up too? Actually, no. Banks came about later. The first banks were actually warehouses or depositories for grain or gold. Let's use gold as an example. People would keep their gold in this place, this warehouse, and they'd get a receipt. The receipt said something like, you have so much gold on deposit with us that receipt could then be used to get the gold out of the warehouse. But eventually, when people had to make payments or pay debts or whatever, instead of going all the way to the bank to get the gold, they started to use the receipts instead. Every receipt was connected to a certain amount of gold in the bank. The banknote really meant, if you bring this to the bank, we'll give you this amount of gold anytime you want. And that's how paper money came about. Wait, isn't it the same now? I mean, don't banknotes represent an amount of gold that the country has? Could you tell us a little more about that? Ah, uh, yes. That was called the gold standard. That used to be the case, but not anymore. At one time, every dollar represented an equivalent amount of real gold from the U.S. gold supply. But the U.S. left the gold standard in 1971. We don't back our currency with gold anymore. Can you tell us about that? What is our money backed by now? I mean, where does the value come from? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing backs our money except people's trust in it. What keeps the value of our money up is simply the fact that people believe our money has value. So it does. Any other questions before we move on? Here we have six topics, but you have to check the four main topics discussed in this audio track. So what do you think? What was the first topic? Yes, according to the audio track, the first topic discussed was 
a common currency. How about the second topic? Yes, it was about examples of a common currency. So, so we talked about a common currency and then we gave examples. How about the third topic? The third topic was about how credit cards came about. How credit cards came about. How about the fourth main topic discussed in this lecture? Yes, it was about the gold standard. That's very good. Okay, let's move to another type of questions. And you are required here to listen to the lecture again. As you listen, choose the correct answer to complete each statement. And I'm going to do only the first three questions and leave the rest to you. Yes, number one. It's not always convenient to trade by exchanging goods because, what do you think, A or B? Yes, according to the audio track, it's not convenient to by it's not convenient to trade by exchanging goods because you can't always get what you want when you want it. So the correct answer is A. How about number two? A common currency is something that is it made of gold or precious metal or has value for everybody in a society? Yes, according to the lecture, the correct answer is B. It has value for everybody in a society. Number three, beads, shells, tools, and grain were all used as currency or used for decoration. What do you think? Yes, according to the lecture, these tools and shells, be beads, or beads, sorry, were all used for decoration or sorry, used for three beads, shells, tools, and grain were all used as currency or used for decoration. What do you think? Yes, the correct answer is A. They used, they were all used as currency. Thank you very much and see you soon, inshallah.